back to the channel and welcome to another episode on the Freelander 2. Now I've had this issue since I bought this car, I'm not going to lie, uh, it really never bothered me. <laughs> uh, these, well especially the Freelander 1, suffer from lazy thermostats. These have got a little bit of a phase going off, they're not as common as, as the Freelander 1. Uh, but what that means is the coolant doesn't get warm, it's allowed to circulate constantly uh, therefore your heaters are cold and the engine doesn't really get warm. Now, me personally, it didn't affect me. I bought this in the summer and now it's getting to winter, you've got the heating on, the engine temperature really struggles. So, I've had a look and it is definitely a thermostat. It's opening about 50 degrees, maybe 40 degrees even. Uh, so, you can imagine when you've got the heaters on, it's constantly trying to cool that coolant down. So the only time it does get warm is if you've got a trailer on, uh, but for normal road driving it takes ages to defrost the windscreen, you're freezing cold, it's a bit like driving a Defender, but uh, yeah, we'll not go there. So I'm going to show you how to diagnose it and I'm going to show you how to replace it yourselves. The, these are not as hard, well in fact nowhere near as hard as the Freelander 1. The Freelander ones are just a bit fiddly, that's all. You've got to jack the engine up and down and mess about. These are just on the side. So yeah, I'll show you how to do it. I'm going to replace the coolant as well because the antifreeze is a little bit weak. So it's going to get the full drain, new thermostat on, and I'll show you how to uh, bleed it up as well. That's where the temperature gauge spends most of its time. So it doesn't really get any warmer than that unless you're towing a trailer. Uh, but other than that you can drive this for hours and hours and hours and that's all it gets to so if you've got the heater on it <laughs> yeah it takes even longer to get there so that thermostat needs replacing so this is the new thermostat i think it was about about a couple of months ago i'm sure it was about 40 50 pounds something like that but it comes with the full housing so rather than the old older cars where you just literally get the thermostat by itself, this one actually comes in built with a housing and you cannot remove it, it's sealed in. So that's why it is a little bit expensive compared to the others. So now all this does is just bolt to the side of the engine, just to the side of the cylinder head, and then obviously it allows the water to circulate round. I have got as well. I have bought as well some new antifreeze. Uh, I meant to change it in general, but of course it, it was one of those jobs that you think I'll do it later, I'll do it later, and now it's come to the winter, it needs doing. So I need to do it before I sell it anyway, because hopefully the Defender will be back on the road soon and then I can get rid of this. So yeah, let's go on with it. Before I get stuck in I'll just add, this engine is exactly the same as what's fitted in the Range Rover Evoque. So if you're, oh and the Mondeo. So if you're suffering the same symptoms, it's exactly the same as this one. Let's get on with it. So the first thing you need to do then, especially like such as me, I've just driven up here now. When the engine warms up, it creates pressure in the cooling system. Now there is a little drain on the radiator. So you imagine the, the, the system's pressurised. You pull the drain, it's just going to splash everywhere. So the first thing we'll do is just release that pressure. That's it, you can hear it now. And then my top tip is just to screw the cap back down and therefore it create it then starts creating a vacuum so when you release the drain on the radiator the water doesn't come gushing out you release the drain you can come up here and then you can control how the speed of the water with the cap so if you let a little bit of air in it drains slow if you take the cap off it starts gushing out so that's just one to bear in mind if you want to keep it clean you see i've just put the front of the freelander on some wood, it's nice and safe, uh, but it just allows me just to access the underneath a lot easier. So that little twisty thing there is your drain for the radiator. So it's on the near side front of the car, or the left side of the car. And all you do is just twist that little thing there, and uh, coolant will start coming out. But what I'm gonna do, because I like to be clean, is I've got a little hose here. I'll just stick on the end there. And when I release that then from a pipe, 
and uh, that should drain and keep uh, keep the floor nice and dry. So now that coolant's draining, I'm going to start removing the air box and anything that might restrict access to the thermostat housing. Now you may be wondering why am I taking the studs out? The reason being that the rear hose is actually metal. So rather than bend it out of the way, I'll take the studs out and remove the thermostat housing forwards. It's a fine piece of Henry cloth now, I'm just going to clean the surface up. This is a new thermostat housing. And you can see it's an exact same. It was about, I think it was about £50. Uh, plus obviously the price of the antifreeze which were an extra tenner. So £60 all in. It comes with a new temperature sensor. The only thing I do when I'm fitting it is I have got some rubber grease. It's grease that's specific for rubber. And I just smear a little bit round all the gaskets and like such as the rear pipe in there, put a bit round the rubber gasket just so they help to seal but also help to actually push that hose back on so it doesn't get stuck and risk tearing the hose. So I'll get this fitted now. I just realised I didn't explain myself earlier. The reason I took the studs out from the cylinder head is because it's a lot easier to pull the thermostat out forwards from this pipe. Because if you pull that pipe out with the studs still in, you're pulling it this way. That pipe is only held in with a circular gasket. And if you pull that pipe out, that goes straight into the EGR cooler and it can be an absolute nightmare to get back in. So rather than create work for yourself, if you can remove the studs, if you can't, you're going to have to pull it out and relocate it later. But like such as me, the studs come out, pull the thermostat forward, leave that pipe where it is. It's a lot easier doing it that way, that way than creating work for yourself by pulling it out from the left. So that is definitely worth mentioning, because that can add an hour easily to your job. So I'll fit this new thermostat now. I've put the rubber rubber grease around that pipe. I've also put it around the gasket of the thermostat. So I'll fit it exactly the same way as it was removed.
So I've just been underneath and closed the drain on the radiator. I've mixed that like a 60-40 mix, so it's not quite 50-50. Now I'm going to fill the reservoir up. You'll be able to hear the air bubbles coming out. Make sure the heaters are on warm, so you don't have to have the fan on. Just make sure that the, the red setting's on. Fill it up and then we're going to run the engine up to temperature and top it up as and when it bleeds all the air out of the system. Now looking what's coming out, I'd roughly guess around 6 litres of coolant come out, so it's not draining the entire cooling system. You've got a big EGR cooler at the back that holds a couple of litres itself, plus all the coolant that's still in the heater matrix and the block. No, there's no coolant in that top hose. So let's start it up now later on. So I'll just turn the engine off so you can hear me. So this is the top coolant hose and what we're waiting now, we're just waiting for the thermostat to open. So you've got your bottom hose here, which is a little bit warm, and then the top hose, which is flat cold. So once the coolant's circulated round, it'll heat itself up to about 85 degrees when the thermostat opens. Once the thermostat opens, it then pumps water around the radiator and back through into the engine. So I just thought I'd explain that. Keep your eye on the coolant level. Obviously it's going to be hot, so be careful when you do take the top off. At the minute there's no pressure. So I'll just top that up. Start it back up and let it run. And obviously I'll keep checking the coolant level and keep an eye on the temperature of these hoses. So the thermostat's now opened, both hoses are now warm, so that shows the coolant circulating around the engine. Heaters are nice and warm in the cab. So that's it, that's the problem cured. So all I'm going to do now, just give it 10 minutes to cool down a little bit, top up the coolant if I need to, and then I'll check the coolant again when the engine's cold. So while it's under pressure, I'll just quickly check the leaks, which there isn't any. Yeah, that drain is okay as well. There's a bit of steam from where I've spilt putting it in. Apart from that. Yeah, everything's fine. So that's it for this one. I hope that one's helped you out. As uh, I've done a few of these now. So don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. And there we go. Just been for a quick run out now. Temperature gauge has not moved from there. Heaters are red hot now, really, really warm. I've had to turn them down, actually. So, yeah, problem solved.